Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> it's been a minute, hasn't it? I don't know what I'm doing. I just felt like vlogging, if I'm being honest, and I miss that creative thing in my life. And so I thought, hey, if this is garbage, I will just throw it away. But if you're seeing it, it means that maybe it's not garbage. <laughs> and maybe I did it. Maybe I made a vlog. I know if you've seen my last video, I said I wasn't sure what's going on with my channel and like the future of it. Um, but I did have some huge things happen in my life. So go check out that video if you care to know about that. If you haven't, Jesus has been a huge part of my year. <laughs> a lot has changed in me and I have changed a lot. And so even my book tastes have changed and I've been a little nervous to come on here and talk about that just because I don't know if any of you will follow me still. <laughs> I think I just need to remember I'm doing this because I like it. I'm doing this because I really do enjoy talking about books. I love reading stories. Jesus gave us stories and I don't know. I just want to make a vlog. So let's just make it simple and just leave it at that. <laughs> But in this vlog, I actually haven't fully decided what I'm going to read, but I'm thinking about Return to Me by Lynn Austin. This is the first book in the Restoration Chronicles. I looked up on Goodreads and there were like literally no bad reviews that I saw. So the ratings were extremely high and they said that they love this series that it was like her best series because she has a lot of books out this is a christian author it's talking about the israelites and how they are in exile but prophecies are coming true king cyrus has declared that the jews may return to jerusalem so i think it's about that i think it's about daniel and like a, a fictional take on that time in history. So I'm really excited about it because I've just seen a lot of good things about it. I don't personally know anyone who's read it, but we will see about it. You know what I mean? Um, this kind of reminds me of Francine Rivers, like biblical historical series. It's set in different times. Um, hers is like in the Roman times, like after Jesus, but similar... I guess that's the only one that I've ever read that's like biblical fiction. <laughs> so maybe that's why. But I am excited to try it and we'll see together. I haven't started it yet, but I do have the audiobook, so I think I might start it soon. But right now I have to go get my girl, one of my girls from school and then the other one. And then I'll come on here, I guess with an update if that's what happens. Okay, we're on this journey together. <laughs> car chat. <laughs> I am, I think, about here in the book. And if you can hear children playing, I'm like right by a park because I'm waiting on my girls to get out of school. So just enjoy the sounds of life. You know what I mean? But I wanted to give you an update on this. I am really liking it. It's definitely very character driven because basically the first part of this book is talking about the prophecy being fulfilled that the Jewish people will get to go back to Jerusalem when King Cyrus, so this really happened, okay, this really happened in history. King Cyrus was a non-Jewish person. He was a pagan leader. He worshipped other god. Actually, I think he was like monotheistic, but he w didn't worship Yahweh, <laughs> the one true God. Hundreds of years before King Cyrus was even born, there were three times in the Old Testament prophecies that God called King Cyrus by name and said that I'm going to use him to bring my people back 
to return them to Jerusalem. And so, and then he did, he used him. He allowed the Jews to just take everything and go back home. And it wasn't a forced thing. It was just whoever wanted to go. And that's where it comes into this book. It says in Ezra that God stirred the hearts of those to go back and rebuild the temple. And so not every heart was stirred to go back to Jerusalem. You're getting the point of view from an older man who was in Jerusalem in the time when the Babylonians took it over. He saw all the horrible things that happened. Like he has nightmares about these things happening. He's of the tribe of Levi and the Levites are the priests. So every priest is a Levite. When they were like exiled out of Jerusalem, he was in that family line to become a priest. So he's like an old man now. He is trying to convince his family to go back. Some don't want to go. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It would be really hard to leave the place where you've been for close to 70 years, or maybe not 70, but they've been there for like 50 or 60 years. And so like there's generations of people who never saw Jerusalem. There's generations of people who had no part in that. They only know Babylon. And so they built their families there. It is interesting to see how they've been pulled away from their faith in a lot of ways. The main older man, his name is Ido, and he is very religious, I guess. He's very, I don't know the word, staunch in his beliefs. He actually practices what he preaches, but his family, like his sons go to prayer and all the things, but they don't really believe it. Like it's more of just a practice and not a belief in their heart. His grandson is the other perspective that we get, and his name is Zechariah. He's like a young man. He just like became a man. Isn't it 13 or something when you have your bar mitzvah? He is wrestling with God, I want you to speak to me if I'm supposed to go back. Well, God does <laughs> through the Bible. Like as he's reading his bar mitzvah, like scriptures that he's supposed to read, he comes across like ones that says, I can't remember exactly what it says, but it's very clear that God is speaking to him and saying, go back to the land I have given you. And so he decides to go with his grandfather and his grandma, and then a young girl who's their neighbor and her father. When you left, it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles. I wanna say like 900 miles or something, was the distance between like how they how far they had to travel and so many of the jews actually just stayed in babylon not surprisingly but it was like a remnant of the jews who went back to jerusalem but it is very interesting and not something i've thought about is when they went back there's people who live there it wasn't just an uninhabited land <laughs> we're just now getting into all of that with you know trusting in the lord he's made a way he's allowed King Cyrus to p make this path for them. And legally they own that land now, but obviously like it takes time for that to get communicated to the people who are there currently um, and have been there for like 50 or 60 years. So it's just really good. I really like it. I really like the audiobook, um, but I have to tell you something pretty crazy. I know this clip is getting long, but it is crazy town and I just need to tell you. <laughs> I was starting to do a Bible study today. I like didn't know what we were going over. I couldn't even remember the book that we were like gonna be talking about. <laughs> and the woman who is doing this Bible study, she starts talking, it's about Ezra. Ezra is a book in the Bible we were studying and she starts talking about the exodus from Babylon to Jerusalem, King Cyrus. She talks all about King Cyrus and how God used him. It's really about God and his sovereignty. like. God was showing everyone, including me, that he is sovereign over even people who do not believe in him. He sways every mind, every heart. And I know that is a really hard thing sometimes to think through with like, well, then why did God allow this? And why did God allow that? But to me, it's like really encouraging because I can trust what is happening is from the Lord. Like he's allowed it and we can trust in him. Anyways, I just had to share that story because I just was like, oh my gosh, God. <laughs> I started reading this book two days ago and then I was thinking to myself, you know, I need to look into where this story is told in the Bible, but then I go to a Bible study and that's exactly what we're talking about. 
God is so providential. Everything is so on purpose and so intimate. And I think if you haven't experienced that with God, I would just highly, highly recommend that you ask him, even if you don't believe in him, just ask him to show you how wild he is and he will do it. I promise you he will do it. Today is Sunday. I'm at Half Price Books because I want to be. <laughs> ben, my husband, so graciously allowed me to just kind of like do what I want. I went to Starbucks. Um, if you guys haven't tried that, I don't even know how you pronounce it, Oleado or Olido, I don't know, the golden foam um, with toffee nuts. This is an expensive drink. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's very expensive, <laughs> but it is very good. I think they make the foam, like the cold foam with olive oil, which sounds disgusting, but it's actually really, really, really good. <laughs> so highly recommend if you haven't ever tried it, but I went to Starbucks. I have a couple of books that I wanna see if half price will take. Um, like I can let them buy them from me and see what they have inside. So let's go do that. books and that was a lot of fun there were a lot of people in there so you know I'm out of the game with filming in public spaces <laughs> but I did pick up Latte Trouble by Cleo Coyle this is the third book in the Coffee House Mystery series and they had it I really did like the I like the I think the first book in this series better than the second one but I still am interested to see because I've heard like every book in this series is very different um like a different feel so we'll see we'll see <laughs> it was four dollars so but yeah that was all I got in there it was a lot of fun to just like look around um I did see those um tea house mysteries I when I tell you I know that's like such a grandma thing but I literally cannot wait to start that series I have the first one I need to like wait to buy all of them <laughs> that's something that as I've been reading in this season of my life I'm like okay you don't need to buy every book in the series before you read them because that also takes the joy out of like, oh, I finished, now I need to buy the next one in the series, you know? But I am really excited to start that series. It's actually a bunch of different authors wrote different books in that series, which I'm, I really like. I think it's kind of cool, but it is a Christian mystery series. So I'll report back if I ever do read it, <laughs> which I'm hoping to soon. I'm over at Barnes & Noble. Let's go in. <laughs>
lot of fun at the bookstores and romping around. Okay, I need to give you an update on this book. <laughs> I am liking it. But I don't know. I feel like it's really slow or something. I just am not enjoying it the way I want to be. And I guarantee you, if I didn't have the audiobook, I would be very bored. <laughs> I saw someone comparing this, and I even compared it in my mind at first with Francine Rivers' The Mark of the Lion series. But that series was like so good from the very beginning. It just sucked you in. And I'm not feeling that with this. And I'm like, do I DNF it? But I really think it was awesome that God connected this to my Bible study the other day. I just don't know. And I'm kind of wondering if, because this is the first book in the series, if it just takes a while for it to like get there with it, or maybe a cliffhanger happens at the end of this book. return to me. Yesterday when I was book shopping, I was like, I don't know if I like want to continue on, but I did. I was like, I'll just give it one more try. As I'm listening to the audiobook today, I am going to continue and seeing how many amazing reviews there are. I'm like, okay, it has to get good. <laughs> it has to get good. Um, not that it's not good. There's actually a lot of quotes in the book so far that I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I've been bookmarking on my audiobook so I can go back and mark in the book. So there is that. Like, I feel kind of torn about it. But I did mention who we're following. The grandpa and the grandma and their grandson. I don't think I mentioned to you their neighbor. It's basically a man and his daughter traveling with them. The, the man's daughter's name is Yael. She, with Babylonian culture, there's like star charts and astrology and worship of other gods. The mom got really, really sick and looked to those things to try to find answers, to try to find healing. The mom ended up dying, but the girl, she's still holding on to those things. She's still looking to those things and thinking that they're right. And she sees God as a rule, like a bunch of rules, a bunch of um, just like harshness and why do we have to do this? You know, your God doesn't get bring freedom. It is really interesting to see her perspective because you know once they come back to Jerusalem there's people inhabiting the land some of them worship gods like they did in Babylon she's found a friend and is looking to them because they're talking about star charts and astrology and telling the future basically divination so that is an interesting like perspective to get on you know these ways from Babylon have been so ingrained like that's all Yael knows about gods or she's interested in it and she's seen some things become true you know telling your fortune and they come about um which I think is a really interesting conversation and one that I've had with a lot of um people around me locally how does that work you know the demonic and I believe all that really is real but it is demonic and they can't know the future, only God knows the future, but they can predict and they're pretty good at predicting. Anyways, it is getting my interest back and I do think that I'm going to continue on reading it, but I just wanted to pop in and kind of tell you where I'm at with it. I don't know, I think I'm on the fence, but hopefully it'll pick up. to say that I am very glad that I continued on in this book. I did finish it yesterday. I was listening to the audiobook and just kind of blazed through it. There were there was like a little stint in there. I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? But I really, really liked it. It felt very true to the Bible. You could tell she had done so much research into this, the timing of things and different even prophets coming to be during this time, like Haggai 
and Zachariah. I love that part because hearing like from a perspective of someone who God was speaking to at that time and place, it was just really awesome. I do believe that God still speaks today. He still speaks to you and me and anyone who will listen. I do believe that prophecy still is a gift. Not that we can add to the Bible, but um, that he still speaks to us. But it was really awesome to, to see Zachariah coming to that. Also, it just reminded me of a conversation that I have had with a friend about obedience and like how obedience, our obedience moves God's heart <laughs> towards us. Even praying and asking him like, help me to want to walk with you. Like that moves his heart so, so much. Everything is from him. The ability to pray, like the ability to, to want to want him, that is from God. I just loved how Zachariah was in obedience to what God had said. Um, something that he says in the book is, it felt like God was silent for a long time. Like God spoke to him to go to Jerusalem, but then it felt kind of silent. He realized like God didn't change his mind. Like God said what he said, you know, like God doesn't change his mind. If he says to do something and you choose not to, yeah, it's going to feel silent because he's still saying what he said. He doesn't sway. He doesn't change his mind. So like when God told them to build the temple, he told them to build the temple. You know what I'm saying? And because they didn't for so many years, it, it did feel like what's happening. There was famine. There was drought. It was because they were fearing man instead of fearing God. He wants us to trust him even when it's like, but wait, what about this person coming after me or that person coming after me or what's going to happen to my family or whatever, but God has said what he said and he doesn't leave his children alone. And when he tells us to walk in obedience, we have to trust him. It's not gonna be an easy trust sometimes. <laughs> I'm walking through something right now that it feels like not a super easy trust, but I know that God hasn't left me. Like I know that he hasn't forsaken me. He is still on his throne. He is still reigning. And that's just a period statement, period he is. He can sway rulers and kingdoms and all of it's in his hand, period. <laughs> I was really thankful to read this right now because I felt like God was speaking to me in that way of like, I am in charge and you just have to obey even when you don't understand it because you know I'm good and I have good plans for you plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I was just listening in the car to Good Plans by, I think it's Red Rocks Worship. It just hit me today in the car because there's a part where it's saying, he has good plans for me, so I will take heart in deserts and gardens. And I have been in a garden season with the Lord this past, like 2023, since April of 2023, I just felt like I was in a garden season. But 2024 has been a desert, like a big, big desert. And he's been reminding me that you don't grow in the Lord. You don't become more like him without walking through deserts. Jesus himself went to a desert to pray and fast. He sought out the wilderness, you know? He didn't try to run away from it or get comfortable. He went to it. I have to do that too. <laughs> um, if I want to grow, if I want to become like Jesus, which it, that's the goal so that we can live in more freedom. He is the good shepherd and he doesn't leave his sheep. He just does not leave us. No matter how faithless we are, he still remains faithful. And I praise God for that. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I have had literally so much fun creating this. <laughs> it's been such a fun thing. And I don't know if I will continue doing this real consistently, but I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you wanna see another one, let me know down below. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. I hope this encouraged someone today. And I guess I will see you in my next video. Bye.